G'day folks, in this week's video we're going to be talking about dual root zone grow beds and how they can be retrofitted into our aquaponics system. So to begin with, I suppose we should cover what a dual root zone grow bed actually is. Now with a dual root zone system, what we've basically got is a container that is sat into an aquaponic grow bed that has a little bit of a media down the bottom to stop algae growing on the surface, or you could have just straight water in there if you wish. Now I first learned about this from Steve from Potent Ponics, and there will be links to his videos, uh, one I've done with him as well, down in the description below. He likes to use a clay media down the bottom, put a little bit of material, I think he uses burlap over the top of it, and then puts a soil blend on top, and into that is where he plants his plant. With the grow bags that I've used, I've popped in a sand layer down the bottom. And what that does is allow not only to, for the nutrient rich water to wick up, but allows the plant roots to grow down through that media and out into the nutrient rich aquaponic water that is underneath the clay balls. So the first dual root zone bed we'll have a bit of a gander at is one I made out of a repurposed bathtub. It was actually our compost worm farm a number of years ago, but I've repurposed it into the dual root zone bed. So we'll start off having a bit of a look at that before we take a wander over to Owens and check out his dual root zone systems. So what I thought I'd do is have a crack at growing some potatoes in my repurposed uh, bathtub worm farm. I've actually had to raise it up quite a bit uh, so the drain will fall down into the sump. So the way I'm thinking of plumbing this up is, oh, just to let you know, I've had to cover up a couple of um, breaches in the paintwork there just with some fish friendly silicon, aquarium grade, uh, just so it doesn't rust out. Not that I think it would be an issue, uh, but this plug assembly is going to cause a few issues. So what I thought I'd do is actually remove that and replace it with a, um, yeah, just a bulkhead fitting, a 40 mil or an inch and a half with a, I think it's called a foot valve screen over the top there, I could be wrong. And what that's going to do is just stop the clay balls from blogging up the, uh, the pipework that will be running back into the sump. And that pipework will run just from that drain area there, just straight across into our sump tank underneath this grow bed. Now, this is going to be a pretty easy build. Um, so we'll get the, bit, uh, the plumbing bit sorted first. So first off, we've got to take out this drain fitting. Hope I'm not going to uh, bump the camera too much. So I'm just going to leave that foot valve screen on the bulkhead fitting. Use the drain washer down the bottom there. Pop the um, bulkhead washer on top. Hold that in place and just do up the nut underneath. And I don't think I'll need any wrenches or anything to try and make this watertight. That should do a pretty good job. And there we go, that's the top half of the um, drain assembly done. We have the bulkhead fitting, obviously not the one in the bathtub, a threaded fitting to slip that goes to the inch and a half or 40 mil pipe, a section of pipe to join it onto this 90 degree elbow, and then the pipe out towards the um, sump tank. I'll just show you um, basically how I do it to give you folks a bit of an idea. Um, just take out my little bit of pipe here, get the Teflon tape, and wrap it around the pipe so a little bit goes over the top edge and yeah not too many it, uh, i find you don't need a lot on there and then basically all you need to do is just um, push that in to the fitting and that will generally create a very nice watertight um, seal and then um, with the drill and then i just zap through the 316 stainless steel screw and that is enough to stop it from coming undone and also make sure that it's nice and watertight. So I'm not going to um, fix this one in place yet. Uh, what I'll do is I'll wait until this is screwed on, then I'll take it over, push this fitting on, zap the hole through and then put the screw in. Uh, but this one here, I will wrap with the tape and give the same treatment. This one here, if any, is probably the most likely one to leak, mainly because there will be water um, sitting in it. Um, for a fair amount of time. Just try and screw it on. There we go. Pick up the swarf. Now just run through this little uh, 316 stainless jobby. There we go. Now we're underneath the bed. Time to put it all together. This bit's pretty easy. Um, as I mentioned, I'm not going to worry about any um, tape here to make it watertight because that water will be flowing straight past this joint here. And I don't think it'll make its way up through the threads to leak. So I'll we'll put this up as high as we can. There, so that old Teflon tape there would give it 
some sort of um, waterproofing as well. That'll do. Now this section here is our um, pipe with the uh, screw in it. What we need to do with this one here is just push him up. So now we have this in place. And pretty easy. Let's see if I can catch this swarf. There we go. And just need to run through the 316. And that's the drain all sorted. Now onto the water, into the bed. For you folks who are new to aquaponics or have family and friends that are aqua curious, just a bit of a reminder, I do have that aquaponics beginner's guide. It's an online interactive guide available. It's 1995 US, a little thing will pop up there and there is a link down in the description as well. It uh, pretty much all starts from what is aquaponics and goes all the way through to building a system, uh, adding fish in there, and I've just uploaded a starting plants and a brand new system module as well. So suss it out if you are interested, 1995 US, no dual root zone, all sorts uh, sandponic content in there as of yet. As soon as I build them, there will be modules added into the guide that do look at both dual root zone and also the samponics. I just want to build a slightly better dual root zone than what we ran in the bathtub. Anyway, that's enough of um, trying to pay the bills and spruiking my wares. Back to the video. So in the theme of reusing odds and ends from around the place, I'm using some hose work from older systems to get the water into this bed. So what we've got is just a line of one inch or 25 mil pipe and it will splice down into that um, line there that delivers water to the grow bed on top of the um, sump tank there. So we've just crawled in under the bed here and to try and drain the water out of this without making too much of a mess. Shouldn't be too much. Now, what we need to do is pop on some hose clamps before I forget, because that's always very embarrassing when you do that. So there you go, that might help, you can actually see there we go, that's those two on. Now for the last one, just had to change angle there, sorry folks. Just couldn't get this hose on. But yeah, just screwing it on generally does the trick. We've got enough over the barb there now to um, tighten up this hose clamp. That should do it. Just need to do these other two now. And then we can make sure the plumbing's all watertight. So here we go folks, sorry if it's a little bit bright down in there, but we have the uh, water dispersal or outlet there, just a tee with a couple of bits of um, hose on it that will sit um, at the end um, grow bag here, just a little bit of a 90 degree elbow to get the water around the corner. Then we come back to a valve, uh, again all 25 mil or one inch, and we have a hose clamp on the pressure side of the valve. So we'll turn this main line on, hear everything gurgle. But now we'll turn this valve on and get a bit of water flowing through here. So we have the water running down there through the screen. Now we'll just hop underneath and see if there's any leaks. Doesn't appear to be any leaks from there, so that's good. And the water is flowing through to the sump. And we do have that one leak to fix there, which looks like it's coming from that top um, hose clamp and yeah, just dribbling down. So. I'll sort that out. So I'm just starting the water flow here, uh, just to give you some idea on the flow. We'll probably, there we go. I think that's pretty much all it. Now, just need to fill up all these gaps so the sunlight doesn't create an algae issue. Now, the only reason I'm using this clay is because I have a couple of beds worth of clay from my parent system when we took it down. You could use rock as well, as long as it doesn't have a lot of carbonates in it, just like a normal grow bed median. Uh, the reason being is it may um, play around with your pH down the road. So there we go, folks. We have the three pouches in there. You can just see the top of the drain. And up the top here, you can see I've buried the inlet pipe. The first one was a bit of an experiment. I used cocoa peat. I used clay balls and also a soil in three different pouches just to see how they would go. A bit of a spoiler here, soil one. So that's when I moved on to just a straight grow using soil. Now I've done a couple of crops in this dual root zone system and I'll actually link a playlist up there and down in the description if you wanna suss it out a little bit later. 
So just to let you know how I filled out the pouches, down the bottom I like to put a layer of sand, it's inert, it won't end up with any anaerobic um, spots forming in it, and it acts as a wick to bring the water up to the soil level. On top of that I used my favourite potting soil, mixed in with that I used a handful of activated rock minerals, basically there's some bacteria in there that help make those rock minerals available to the plant. There'll be a link to that product down in the description uh, below as well. Now, if I had my compost going or the worm farm on the go, I would have added in a couple of handfuls of that as well, just to get those microorganisms in there to help break down the rock minerals and the other organic matter and make it bioavailable for the plants. When it comes to popping the bags in the bed, the first time I used this method, I popped them directly on the bathtub floor then surrounded them by the clay and planted them out. With our second dual root zone grow, I popped down some little trays with holes in them, basically the bottom of large pot plants, and I popped the pouches into there, thinking it would be easy to pull the pouches out and replace them when I wanted to swap over the crops. Now, it didn't really work that well because the clay came in and filled the gaps, and next time I grow using this method, I'm not going to worry about them at all. I'm just going to basically pop the pouches in and work them down into the clay to the point where the water can soak up through the pouches into the sand and then wick up into the soil. I don't think the plant roots are going to have any issues either, growing out down through the sand like they did previously and out through into the clay so they can take advantage of that nutrient-rich aquaponics water. So that's been my experience with the dual root zone system so far. Very impressed with them when it comes to growing the potatoes and the ginger. Uh, but further on down the line, I do plan to grow out using this method with a much larger bed and trial a few different plants to see how they go. Now a bloke who has tried a few different plants is Owen on the north side of Brizzy. Owen's used repurposed deep water culture beds for his dual root zone ones. They've got an inlet in one corner, an outlet in the other corner, and a little standpipe that dictates how high the water goes before it empties. I visited him a few times and I thought I'd just slip in here a little bit of video of his swamp style dual root zone system as well as his more traditional one like the clay one we had on the go here. And over here you've got a couple of uh, just are those soil bags? Uh, yeah they're the front and back of the root pouches. Yeah. Um, basically the bottom of it, bottom half of it is filled with sand uh, pearlite and vermiculite these ones have in it okay. uh, just to add a little bit of extra air because this is what I call a swamp bed this one it basically does a few different jobs it holds my more long-term plants um, it's always provides water and I've got a ton of duckweed in there which I feed to the chickens oh, okay. the chickens love the duckweed the fish will eat it if they're hungry enough but it's not their favorite so these one here, it's not too dissimilar to your bathtub. You've got, in a way, dual root zone. These ones just have sand in the bottom, just enough to cover where the water level is, and then dirt on top. These couple have potatoes in them. They've only just recently been done. Basically, I'm gearing up for when it gets a bit warmer in a month or two. So I'll have my tomatoes going. The strawberries are are on the go, they'll liven up soon. It's a little bit cold for them at the moment. I do hope you've enjoyed this video, folks, and it's given you a couple of ideas that you can implement in your own aquaponics build. There will be more dual root zone builds coming from me down the line. We just gotta sort out this system, break it down and move it somewhere else down the backyard. And there will be a dual root zone as well as a sand bed in that build down the track. Just wanted to say a quick g'day to all you folks who do leave your comments down below in the comment section. I try to get back to all the questions and comments after the videos are uh, posted. Huge thanks as well to all you folks who are supporting the channel by purchasing our Backyard Aquaponics Beginners Guide 1995, link below, one will pop up at the end. And also you folks who have been supporting the channel for years through the YouTube membership program and also our own patron base site, Farm Your Own Yard. Huge thanks to you all. You really are helping this channel stay afloat, basically. But I will pretty much well leave it there. I do hope you're all well and happy in your own aquaponics and gardens are booming. And I will catch you next video. Cheers, folks, and happy growing.